Well, hey, all of you sheepies near and far, welcome to worship whenever you have a chance to view this. It is the weekend of May 23rd. I'm recording this on Saturday. So whenever you have a chance to view this, welcome. Let me pray us in. Savior, lead us to the place in our souls where there is tranquility, peace, and calmness, where the waters are so still that we can walk on them with you holding our hand and leading the way. Allow our gentle spirits of love, kindness, gentleness to permeate and infect the land. Let it spread like a wildfire across this nation. In your holy name we pray. Amen. That prayer comes from ChristianTT.com. So again, we are in the Fruits of the Spirit, Galatians chapter 5, and so you can read through that as well. I'm going to reference a couple scriptures as uh, we dive into our message today. But today we are looking at our fifth fruit of the Spirit, which is kindness. Kindness. Research has shown that the chemical in our bodies known as oxytocin, released when we do a general act of kindness, of generosity for someone else. Oxytocin is linked to that warm, fuzzy feeling that uh, is said to also lower our stress level and anxiety. Oxytocin is also linked to reproduction and childbirth. It is what connects mothers and babies. Women's bodies are just gorging with, with oxytocin immediately after childbirth. But both women and men produce oxytocin, and it has that warm, fuzzy ripple effect. When we do something kind, we feel good, and that person in whom we do something kind for also feels good. And if someone else saw the act of kindness in which we did, that person feels good. All good. And couldn't we all use a little more kindness in our lives and in our world these days? Amen. So as we take an in-depth look at our fifth fruit of the Spirit, kindness today, can you think of something that someone has done for you that was really, really kind? So what's the definition of kindness? Well, Webster defines kindness as a quality of being friendly, generous, considerate, respectful. Biblical kindness is defined as selfless, compassionate, considerate, merciful, its greatest power is revealed in the practice of our enemies amongst the least of, least of these, to love your neighbor. Show kindness to everyone. For the perfect emblem of biblical kindness, we need to look no further than who? Jesus. So as I think about the kindness that people have shown to me, our congregation here at Ballotin UMC, as well as the Ballotin community come to mind. You all have shown me and my family such great kindness over these years that I've been with you, and I appreciate it so very much. And I hope that I'm a good reciprocator of that kindness. I think I've shared this story before with my congregation at least, but I always remember a particular act of kindness that a young person did for me. It was my last Jummies, Junior United Methodist Youth event, as I was the state youth coordinator. I was supposed to be in charge of this youth ministry event for like 800 people at the St. Cloud Holiday Inn. It was my last one before I became pastor. I didn't even know that I was going to be pastor at Ballot in UMC then. But I ended up sick in bed <laughs> for the whole weekend. I, I mean, I was really sick. I was throwing up and fever and chills and the whole deal. In fact, they quarantined me in a room by myself as to not infect 
the youth that were leading the event. Every so often, someone might stick their head in and ask me a question if necessary, but man, I was down for the count, you know? Really sick. One of our youth on our design team came in and she sat down next to me uh, at the bedside. She put her hands on me, she laid hands on me and she prayed over me. It was so beautiful. It's something that I will never forget. She risked getting herself sick to pray over me. It was something so kind and so selfless, so impactful. And a little while later, by evening, my fever had broke. I began to feel a little bit better. At least I could be upright a, a little bit. Still wasn't feeling great. I just received an invitation from her this week to her wedding coming up this fall. And, uh, you know, I, I just always remember this random act of kindness by, by this young, young woman now. She's a mom. She, she's got two little boys of, of her own. So take a moment to think about that. Something that someone did for you that was just so incredibly kind. In a study of 37 countries around the world, 16,000 subjects were asked their most desired traits in a mate. For both genders, the first choice was kindness. Acclaimed psychologists gathered data on successful marriages for decades and found that kindness was the essential, essential ingredient. The Greek word for kindness is krestos. Who does that remind you of? Christ, of course. Krestos, meaning useful, which means kindness involves action. Kindness involves action, whether it is letting someone go ahead of us in a line at the store or paying for the car behind us in the drive through picking up sticks on your neighbor's lawn, etc., etc. Kindness involves action. Action can also involve words, praying over someone, like Miss Mandy Ruthie Raleigh did for me back then. Compliment, complimenting someone, even if you don't know them. You know, maybe you strike up a conversation in line. We talked about that a couple weeks ago, um, about patience. You know, what, what, how can we be more patient in, in the line at the store? We'll strike up a conversation with, with someone. I really like your, your shirt today, or whatever it was. Um, recently, I was in line at Walmart, and a mom and a little girl were in line ahead of me, and all of a sudden, her dad comes up, he says, excuse me, and comes up behind me and hands her a four-pack of SpaghettiOs, and, she, and Dad says, is this what you wanted? And she gets this big grin on her face, and I said, I like SpaghettiOs too. And then I said, do you like the ones with the hot dogs or the meatballs, or do you like just plain? Just plain, she said. Yeah, I said, yeah, me too. You know, just, just simple stuff like that. So that's what you, you, you can do. Compliment someone, even if you don't know them. Jesus practiced kindness that was considered radical for that time and culture. His kindness extended to the people that were not treated well. They were not treated well. To the sick and the poor and the social outcasts, we remember the clip from the TV series, The Chosen, a few weeks ago with the woman at the well. It was no accident that Jesus went out of his way in a place that he wasn't supposed to be. He wasn't supposed to be in Samaria. Jews weren't supposed to go to Samaria, but he went specifically in order to visit with this woman this outcast. His loving kindness changed her life and in turn changed other lives because she told everyone that she knew. She went back to the village. Here's this, this man that told me everything that about me changed her life and changed other lives in, in the process. 
She wasn't just full of the Spirit, full of the Holy Spirit. She was also full of oxytocin and didn't even know it. You see the ripple effect that kindness can have. But while we are talking about the Holy Spirit, today is Pentecost. You can see behind me on the cross, we have red. Can't see the whole cross, um, but red. So wear something red on Sunday for the birth of the church. Happy birthday, church. Perhaps you can make, uh, um, make some, some red jello, or you can make um, a red cake or, or something to celebrate Pentecost. The day that the Holy Spirit blew through Jerusalem and changed the disciples' lives and other lives and our lives forever. Just as I was talking about the um, Holy Spirit, did you hear that pop? I think it was our, our sound system, so sorry about that. If I jumped a little bit, it was the Holy Spirit, I guess. So there, there you go. Because of God's loving kindness, because of God's loving kindness, he, he sent the Holy Spirit to us. Last week, as we talked about patience and Jesus' ascension and how the disciples were told to wait for the Holy Spirit. Remember how he told them to wait? Jesus promised that he was sending an advocate so that we would never be alone. In God's loving kindness, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. And then in turn sent the Holy Spirit to empower us to be his resurrection people in his kingdom now and the one to come. God is not simply kind because he is good. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Absolutely. True statement. God's kindness serves as a much greater purpose, though. God's loving kindness is to lead his people, you and me, to repentance, friends, to repentance. Remember, God is patient with us, not wanting anyone to perish. God's kindness is also linked to forbearance, patience and self-control. We haven't gotten to the self-control yet. That's our last fruit, but it's linked to forbearance. Kindness is also linked to forgiveness. The message translation lists the fruits of the fruit of kindness this way. A sense of compassion in the heart. I always like to look at different translations. You can go to BibleGateway.com and you can look up all different kinds of translations there. A sense of compassion in the heart. I like that. The Apostle Paul talks about kindness as putting on, as putting on, just like we put on a comfortable sweatshirt on a rainy day or a snowy sort of day, or maybe our stretchy pants after a long day. Can I get a witness? That's me. We remember when we looked at our armor series, that's uh, Ephesians chapter 6, Paul talks about putting on the armor of God. Well, just prior to this, in Ephesians chapter 4, Paul talks about putting on kindness, putting on kindness uh, as we live, as we live as children of the light. So let's listen in. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 through 32, living as children of the light. This is the New Living Translation. Verse 17. With the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. And they wander far from the life of God that God gives. They wander from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature in your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. 
Instead, let the Holy Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth. For we are all parts of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good hard work. And then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be encouragement to those who hear them. And do not, let, do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. So get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So, if in God's loving kindness, he has given us his grace, and if we in turn are unkind, it makes the Holy Spirit sorrowful. Did you catch that in the text? Just as kindness releases oxytocin, warm fuzzies, unkindness can have the same negative effect. Unkindness can have a similar ripple effect. If we think of it that way and pause, and I think that is something in which, and think about something in which I do or say can make the Holy Spirit sad. Whoa. Huh? Would it give us pause? It gives me pause. I'm thinking that it's a really good thing that the Holy Spirit doesn't come with a shock collar, you know? When I do or say something that is hurtful. Ooh, wowza. How about you? Just as fruit matures on a vine or a tree, this spiritual fruit matures in us as we put off these weeds of bitterness, anger, rage, harsh words, slander, and all kinds of evil. Pluck those things out of there, Paul says, and instead put on things such as kindness and tenderheartedness and forgiveness. When we wear kindness like a comfortable pair of stretchy pants after a long day, or that comfortable sweatshirt on a rainy day, we start to look like and act like Christ. We start to resemble him. We look and act more like Jesus, friends. We reflect the light of Christ to the world around us. So as we close today, are you remembering that act of kindness in which someone did for you? And if you know that person, Maybe send them a note this week and let them know how it impacted you. Your note will then release oxytocin, warm fuzzies in that person. And then I can guarantee you that person is going to have some oxytocin flowing and probably will show some kindness to someone else. And it's like a kindness boomerang. Praise be to God. So friends, be God's kids out there. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can find the video clips that I will use for today's message on my Facebook page. Uh, one is the Kindness Boomerang. Um, color your world with kindness. We've got a couple music videos as well. Um, and then a video clip called The Power of Kindness. And so go back on my, my page if you have Facebook and take a look at those. They're all on YouTube. You can find them there as well. 
Have a wonderful week. Next week, we're going to look at the fruit of the spirit called goodness. Goodness. Bye for now, friends.